On this episode of Pedalbox, we're making the Porsche breathe better with some new shiny parts. Yes, this time we're doing upgrades rather than maintenance to the 944 and adding a shiny stainless steel exhaust because the centre section that's on there at the moment is a little bit rusted and has a bit of a dodgy weld, so why not replace the whole thing? And in addition to that, we're going to add a K&N filter to the front end because... Well, just reasons, really. I've always yeah. wanted one. Yeah, I've never had a K&N filter either. I've got a clone on the Mark II, but why not have the genuine article? Well, there are reasons why you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like hot air. Yeah, a cone yeah. filter without a snorkel yeah. is just going to take hot engine bay air. But it's going to sound awesome. So this is the MAF that we've taken off the 944, and unlike most others that you find on modern cars, this is a barn door type. So it has a flap which is blown open, and you can see straight through there how that opens, and that is on a lever on a resistor. And as the flap opens more, you get a different resistance that's sent to the ECU and the ECU knows how much, well, roughly how much air is coming through. It's as much as a MAF as it is a windsock, basically, and it's only driven by the airflow going through it rather than an electrical sensor like we had on the Mark II Golf or basically anything from this century. So it's a very interesting, different design. And in order to put the K&N filter on, we have this little adapter. Now, this is just a little piece of machined aluminium with a flange that goes onto the front of there like that. Now the problem with this is all of the mounting brackets are attached to the airbox. So we're going to have to make something to go from these bolts just in front here to hold up the bottom of the MAF. So we're going to drill, to, drill a couple of holes, fit it and then measure up for the bracket. Just before we put the MAF on, I'm going to cap off the original crankcase breather tube because we don't need that anymore. And the MAF just goes in like this with the new bracket on. Unfortunately, because all the mounts for the airbox were what held the MAF up, we're going to have to make something to hold it up so that this just doesn't batter around in the engine bay and hit the coolant pipes, the chassis rail, generally everything, and ruin a really nice filter. So I'm going to use two of the original bolt mounts at the front here for the airbox, just in front of the headlight mechanism, and go onto the bottom where I've drilled two little holes in this plastic mount and go onto this aluminium adapter that sits on the front of the MAF housing itself. So this is the bracket that we've made to hold it up. We can pop this on and see what the clearances are like. So this supports it pretty well, all told. It doesn't interfere with this coolant pipe down here. It's supported, but it still has enough flex for when the engine vibrates. Now, all I've done is taken some half inch steel and bent it around, put a couple of holes, or put a couple of larger holes in, and welded a little stub on so it goes onto the original mounting point on here. So the car itself is completely unmodified, which is exactly what we want. Now, I was going to weld a couple of little tabs onto here to bolt into, but unfortunately, that's going to be almost impossible to get down to unbolt. And we don't want the same problem as we had with the MAF onto the airbox, where it takes the better part of half an hour faffing around with a tiny little wrench to try and undo it. So, the best way I can think of to do this is use a couple of zip ties, which I was pretty sure I'd put in my pocket, but it doesn't look like it. So, I'll go and grab them. So now we've got that zip tied in, it's nice and stable, it's connected to the bracket and it's got enough movement that it's not going to rattle itself apart with the engine moving, but it's also not interfering and rattling around in the engine bay. So I'd call that a win. And it'd be nice and quick to disassemble, unlike when you had to unbolt it from the airbox. Welcome to the underside of the 944 and you can see why we need to replace the centre section. This is probably the original exhaust out of the factory and the reason we think we know that is because this downpipe that goes all the way to the headers is welded in one piece to the centre section and it breaks back here for the rear section. So unless this has been replaced with a whole section all the way forward to the downpipes, this is the original. Judging by some of the less than stellar welds that have been done to keep this alive and attached, I'm pretty certain that this is the original one. But standard operating procedure for installing a lovely stainless steel aftermarket exhaust is cutting the downpipe because this end is swaged on so you don't have to put new headers on. And we're going to have to cut this just about here to be long enough to go into that swaged out section 
and then we'll bolt it on and the rest of it should fit on quite nicely. All the bolts have come undone reasonably well, but the ones we don't want to touch are the ones that go from the headers onto this downpipe. And that's mostly because they're corroded, also because we don't have header gaskets, but definitely mostly because they're fairly well corroded and I just don't want to get involved with that. So we're going to get something in, cut this out, and hopefully get it the right length first time. But yeah, we'll see what happens. See what I've got. Adrian, I've got goggles. So the centre section of the exhaust was pretty bad. It's the outer skin that's peeling away. Although it hasn't failed, it's not blowing. It is not good and if you look down this end you can see a fairly questionable weld that was put to try and keep this running and that's pretty ugly i mean it works but it's definitely pretty ugly so we've got the exhaust cut off seems a bit rude not to see what it sounds like just with an open header doesn't it Ooh. It's a bit tractory at idle, but it revs nice. Some of the brackets holding the exhaust up are pretty rusty, and at least one of them is about 50 quid to get replaced from Porsche because it's a Porsche part. So whilst we've cleaned them up and painted and they're drying, we're going to make an upgrade onto the throttle linkage. Now this eccentric cam that sits on here at the moment results in a fairly big movement actually producing very little throttle actuation because of this much longer piece that comes off and is the first part to be pulled. This is a completely circular pulley which makes the throttle actuation completely linear. So in order to take this off we just pull this around and take this out from the index there. This nut comes off like that. That's a longer thread than I expected. And this just pulls off the top of here. Now there's an indexing point so that goes back on in much the same way and it just drops on there. The nut goes back on the top And once it's tightened up, I'll nip that up in a second, this just spins back around. You can already tell, just with not having this big actuator on the end, how much stiffer that is to pull. There's no, uh, there's no lever effect. So that is now a completely linear throttle, and it should give much better throttle response from just touching the pedal. Here we are back underneath the car once again and we've got our bracket repainted so that's not going to rust or at least hopefully not going to rust. We've cleaned up the end of this so it's nice and pretty and here we have the first part of the new exhaust going back on which I'm trying to put on upside down. Go me. So this fits on here and the bracket inevitably goes on the other way around so it's going to have to slide here. This just fits all the way down in there. Right, so that holds pretty nicely on there and then we can start trying to do up this exhaust clamp and I've got some fresh new stainless steel bolts to go in here. So that's nice and tight in. We'll leave these ones loose, partly because I've forgotten to bring a spanner down and partly because we still need to fasten the back in. And uh, we'll see whether this blows down here, which is a good excuse to see what it sounds like with just the one silencer on. Well, the back of the exhaust was completely uneventful and it just started to rain a bit, so we didn't get any video of it. But if you start it up, you can hear what it sounds like. Sounds pretty good. It's got a nice little raspy note to it, which you didn't have before. So I guess we'll take this out and see what it sounds like on the road.
all in all, that has been a very successful day. I think you'll agree, that sounds fantastic. The exhaust is really, really nice. It's got a good rasp to it from about 3,000 to 4,500, 5,000 yeah. RPM. It just sounds stunning. If you like what we've done, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, let us know what you think. And if you'd like to support us, you can buy some of our lovely merch or you can head over to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can support the channel directly. Thanks very much. We'll catch you next time.